Andreas, we're here at this FQXI conference uh, that is focusing on uh, of the concept of events in physics, uh, which people here are taking very seriously. Uh, you, uh, you think it's less important than meets the eye. Why? Well, I do think this conference is a great event. <laughs> but, but this morning we spent hours and hours debating exactly what the meaning of an event is, and the day before we spent a lot of time too. I, I don't see the point. <laughs> To be honest, I, I find the I, I find the event a sort of abstract word, and people are struggling to connect it. I think it's all about the physics. So what what do you call an event? I came in here for an interview. You know, sit down on the bench. Is that an event? Well, it's all physics. You know, what is it exactly when I you know touch the bench, when my butt touches the bench, when my arm touches the bench? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, well, I mean, I technically, any of that stuff matters. A, a, an event in relativity is a, is a point in four-dimensional space-time, and an event in in uh, in quantum mechanics is uh, something that happens with the wave function. Some would say a decoherence when there's an ob observation. Some strange people would say that all of the uh, probabilities exist in an Everettian multi-world right. environment. So, so maybe it's my Everettian views that are also de demystifying. <laughs> this event thing. Because because to me, yeah, so at the quantum level, an event is 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 the interaction of a measure you know, an object making a measurement of another object and that's a sloppy process. When exactly you know, when when you write your name in the book, is it when you put the first put the pencil yeah. down? Is it when you're done? Is it right. you know, who cares? It's you understand how to write your name in the book. You understand right. how to record a video. You understand all this stuff. Right. So, you so don't have to count Exactly when. So the analogy is the the, the wave function, yeah. and and and, just, and and you have this Everettian. I, I think I know what an Everettian is, but every time I hear it, it just sounds so bizarre that I, I probably don't understand it. So maybe give it another try. So, 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 an Everettian looks at quantum mechanics and says, "All I have to do is solve the equations for the wave function, and everything I need to know is in there." And there's this mystery because. There's a lot of quantum uncertain events that then have outcomes, um, and in the if you just solve for the wave function, all those outcomes are represented. And the interesting thing, and the sort of one of the powerful features that causes people to really buy in to the Redian pictures, you say, how can that be? How, how can all the outcomes be there? I don't know about them. And the thing is, quantum mechanics itself predicts that you don't know about them. <laughs> so you can check check technically how how. What would you do to find out about them? And there's nothing you can do. That's self self consistent, but it yeah. builds into the system sort of a impossible to 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 uh, to, to refute because it's uh, it's sort of impossible based on the logic internally. Well, the cool thing though is that even that is only mostly true, and you can dial it. So some of the talks here, there've been some beautiful talks about how you push quantum mechanics to the limit, and you and you cause things that are measurements but not quite and you look for that little messiness uh, where we're because where, where, nothing's a perfect measurement right so right. so in fact there's always a, some probability that I will um, interfere with the other outcomes now, there's some I flip a coin there's always some probability tomorrow I'll think I flip the other way there's some probability my brain will fluctuate and, and, and that'll happen so that's that's what it's like to experience the interference of the different right. Everett worlds. Right, right, right. And right. and so um, there's some probability for all of that. And people are pushing in, in laboratories the limits of that. Um, you know, so you can still see the interference. So big, big, solid measurements that still show a little bit of interference. And, and everywhere we look, we still see the quantum effects. Okay, but let, let, let's look at the macroscopic world where we have uh, trillions, multiple levels of trillions of quantum functions, wave functions with all the different particles all interacting together. Right. So it's the conjoined probability of all of these things. I mean, for every second of time, there's, it seems like almost an infinite number of possible worlds if you, divide, if, if you have the function of the wave function of every particle combined together in a probabilistic sense. So the cool thing is you don't have to count them. The, the, the potenti potentiality for those worlds is there for two reasons. One is the, um, the size of the mathematical space, the so-called Hilbert space, yeah. that we, need to we know we need it to describe what we see around us. Right. And then the arrow of time, actually, and that's a very important topic in this conference. 
um, it's connected to cosmology, which is a deep, very deep part of my work. Um, it's the arrow of time that enables the, the worlds to branch, um, branch out as opposed to branching in. So if, if worlds branched in, we'd be totally confused. Yeah, we'd, 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 right. we'd be absolute chaos. And, and if we ever reached equilibrium, that would be it for the branching. So, so it's a pretty interesting, interesting um, aspect of, of these many worlds. But, but these so, so all the ingredients. So yes, there's there's this feeling that there's all this branching and it's all constantly ongoing. But we know that physics has given us the materials to make that. So, so we know that we know we have the Hilbert space big enough for that. We know we have an arrow of time solid enough for that. And that's all you need. And the rest is just what happens when you run the equation. But all, all of those worlds are equally uh, actual in some way? Well, that's, that's what people struggle with. So, so I take the view that yes, they are, and, um, and, it, and it weirds me out. <laughs> so, so with my physics hat on, yeah. I take that view, and with my guy <laughs> sitting on a bench <laughs> hat on, I, I, um, it weirds me out. But that's, that's what I... But, but that's what I say is the um, problem I have because I'm a classical being in the mm -hmm. quantum world. So I think I think that really is how quantum, how physics works. Is that all the worlds are there? <laughs>